Hello everybody, I hope you are well and that today is a lovely Friday for you all. If you ever come into my room, and I'm sure you will at some point, and you come into my study, I call it that because of all the books I have in here, one of the things you might see is something like a flamingo paperweight. This one's got snow and a flamingo inside. You might see a flamingo like this that my mum gave me. And this paperweight, which has got glitter, which is really rather lovely. Can you see the glitter? And the reason that I have all of these flamingo things is because they remind me how important it is to be flamingos of hope and not lemmings of despair. It's important that even when things are difficult, you try to look for the good that's around you so that you can feel happier and a bit better about perhaps the situation. So in today's story, I'm going to be talking about hope. And it's a story that comes from this book called The Book of Hope. And it's by, edited by Catherine Rundell by Bloomsbury Publishers. And there are lots of stories and poems and pictures in this book all about the importance of being hopeful. What's rather lovely about this book is this book was sent to us for free. It was sent to the school and many schools all over the country just to inspire children and inspire teachers and everybody really to look for things to be hopeful about. Now in today's story there is an animal but it's not a flamingo, it's an armadillo. So now I'm going to read to you the story called The Monk and the Armadillo by Anjali Rauf. Situated somewhere between the cold snowy peaks of Nepal and the tall swaying mango trees of India stands the highest mountain your imagination can possibly imagine. And right on the very top of this mountain's tip lay a single small straw hut in which lived a monk, a very, very holy man who believed it was his calling to sit on the top of this mountain in complete isolation until he understood the depth and breadth of the universe and everything in between. Now, sitting in this small hut, all day and all night, with nothing but the sun and the moon and the wind to keep you company, can get awfully boring. Especially if you've been doing it like this monk had for 50 years, as this wise monk had been doing. And so deep down in his heart, the monk began to get restless and started to hope for a sign. A sign that would tell him that his knowledge was complete, that he had learned everything he could possibly learn, and that he should return back down the mountain to the beautiful village where he once grew up, the friends he had left behind, and the delicious food he had been dreaming about, having survived on nothing but grains and seeds collected from the rocks of the mountains for fifty years, the monk secretly hoped a sign would come, for oh, how he longed to taste a bowl of hot, delicious noodles, floating with a million spring onion hoops, just like his mother used to make. And even though he knew he could have left the mountain at any time, the monk felt in his heart that he should wait, wait for a sign to show him it was time to leave in peace. A year went by, and another, and another, and another, and still the monk continued to live in hope. Until one day, all the way from the golden hot sands of Arabia, his sign began to make his way towards him. For a mighty storm was hurtling across the desert plains and like the insides of a giant washing machine, the wind had snatched up 
a poor armadillo into its arms. The armadillo, frightened and alone, curled itself up into a tiny little ball of iron armour and squeezing its eyes tight, hoped with all its heart that it would land safe and sound and not too far away from home. The storm was fierce and wild and hungry and unknown to the armadillo, travelled thousands of miles. So imagine the armadillo's surprise when, on feeling itself dropped, the armadillo found itself not in a desert at all, but outside the door of a straw hut situated on a very, very snow, very, very tall snow-capped peak that stood so high above the clouds it could almost touch the stars. And imagine the monk's surprise when just a few hours later he opened his door to find a poor armadillo shaking at his feet. Do you know what an armadillo looks like? I very much imagine you do because you are super smart people. But just in case you don't, I happen to have a picture of an armadillo as one of the pictures in my study. Here's the armadillo that would normally be on my wall. Can you see that? This armadillo was painted by one of my friends. So this is what an armadillo looks like. We'll go back to the story where the armadillo has just landed outside the hut and the monk can see it shivering with fear. It's here, said the monk. It's here, the sign that I have been waiting for. Lifting the armadillo up in his hands with a joyous smile. My sign is here and it is in need of my help. And thanking the skies for sending the, the sign to his door, the monk ran down the mountain at once to find help for his new friend. The monk ran down the mountain to go and get help. And I am pleased to say that since that day, the monk and the armadillo went on to become great friends for each had fulfilled the hopes of the other. The armadillo had wanted to travel and the monk had wanted a sign to go down the mountain. The monk, forever after that, looked after the armadillo and kept it warm and fed and happy. And the armadillo, by inspiring the monk, to become a vet and to do what he could to be of service to other animals, found that the monk had a new occupation which meant he could buy as many bowls of hot delicious noodles as he liked because he'd found a sign. Now, I wonder what the meaning of that story might be. Maybe it's about looking for things that make us feel hopeful. And the monk found the armadillo. And I'm just going to tell you that this picture of an armadillo is super special to me because it was given to me by one of my friends called Philip Shepherd. And Philip used to live in Australia many, many years ago in Australia. And when he worked in Australia as a young man, one of the jobs he used to do was to work, about 40 years ago, on a cartoon. And the cartoon was called Scooby-Doo. So if you have ever watched some of the old Scooby-Doo cartoons, not the recent ones, but some of the older ones, that might have been my friend, Philip, who made this armadillo that ended up being on this wall. There's the space just there. There. In this school, in this time. Something amazing about that. So.
So, my thoughts for you this weekend, and for any mummies and daddies watching, is to try to look for things that are happening. And I know it's very difficult because we are in lockdown. And try to look for things that are happening and try to see if there are some positives that we can find in amongst all of this unusual time. And maybe you could be a flamingo of hope, a sparkly flamingo of hope, or maybe you could be the armadillo of possibility. Who knows? Perhaps this weekend you'll be inspired to draw some animal pictures that might be armadillos of positivity or flamingos of hope or rhinoceroses of um, random thoughts. I don't know. Have a go at drawing some animals this weekend. And if you do draw some animals, please send them back to me. I love to see your creations and um, I wish you a really good weekend. Bye everybody. See you soon.